Jeez, my allergies are acting up today. So if I sound a little funny in this video, that's why. I missed. Go ratings, Pokey fans! Michael here, and regional variants were probably my favorite thing that was added to Pokemon in the Generation 7 Alola games. They added an almost scientific layer of lore to the Pokemon games, explaining how Pokemon can adapt and evolve to different environments resulting in dramatic changes to their physiology. Now we of course currently have no idea whether or not regional variants will be returning in Pokemon Sword and Shield, but I'm really hopeful and excited about the possibility that they could. I wanted to share that excitement with all of you guys by listing off 10 Pokemon that I really hope get Galar forms. Or Galarian forms. Galarish? Forms? I don't know. I'm probably going to be pretty inconsistent with what I say throughout this video. This list is in no particular order, so let's just get started with the first entry, Gigalith. Gigalith is one of my all-time favorite Pokemon. I've always thought its appearance just looked so fearsome and cool, and I really love the stark contrast between the dark body and the bright red crystals. And since I like it so much, I would love for it to get some extra attention. While it could get a Mega Evolution, I think it would be cooler if it got a Galar form. And when I say cooler, I mean literally. This is my concept for a Galarian Gigalith, which is an Ice Dark type. The Galar region clearly has a lot of cold, snowy areas. And if a Gigalith found itself in one of those areas, it probably wouldn't be particularly happy. For one, rocks get more brittle in the cold, but secondly, Gigalith absorbs energy from the sunlight and cold, snowy areas tend to be overcast most of the time. To counteract this harsher environment, Gigalith's body turns into a mostly icy composition, which is obviously much more suited for a colder environment. Additionally, its crystals become a much darker color. This is partially a nod to the concept of black ice, but it's also a practical application since the darker coloring makes them more effective at absorbing sunlight, since, if you didn't know, darker colors absorb more light. The reason it becomes a dark type is because it's forced to spend more of its time above ground. Gigalith normally prefer to spend most of their time underground, but since in this snowy cold climate, their sun absorbing isn't as effective due to the constant cloudiness, they have to spend more time above ground to get the sun energy that they need. This results in Galarian Gigalith developing a much more aggressive nature to protect itself from threats on the surface that it normally wouldn't have to deal with. The next entry on this list is Crobat. Like Gigalith, Crobat is one of my all-time favorite Pokemon that hasn't really gotten any extra attention since its release, and I'd obviously like to see it get that. There's gonna be quite a few Pokemon on this list that fit that description. This is my concept for a water flying type Galarian Crobat. Some of you will recognize this art, since it's a concept that I designed a couple years ago and then commissioned Really Dark and Windy to draw for me. I have already made a video going over this concept, but since we obviously didn't get an Alolan Crobat and I really love the design, I wanted to show it off again. This regional variant of Crobat occurs due to Crobat spending more time flying over water, which admittedly made more sense in Alola, but hey, Galar has a lot of coastline. As it flies over the water, Crobat becomes increasingly likely to dive into the water to catch aquatic prey. The more that it does this, the more effective it needs to be at navigating through the water, hence its transformation into a more aquatic body and its wings changing into fins. These fin wings are actually inspired by flying fish, which can't literally fly, but Galarian Crobat can. Number three is Snorlax. Snorlax is one of the most beloved Generation 1 Pokemon that's honestly pretty iconic, and it hasn't really received a lot of the extra attention that a lot of other really popular Generation 1 Pokemon have, like Charizard or Mewtwo, for example. I think it deserves that extra attention, so I'd love to see it get a Galar form. My concept for a Galarian Snorlax is actually another one that was designed by me with the art made by Really Dark and Windy, originally intended to be in a Lola form, but it never actually made it into a video. And my concept is turning Snorlax into a ground type. I foresee this change coming about due to Snorlax inhabiting an environment where there is a legitimate threat to its safety. Normally, Snorlax is so big and tough that 
it can sleep wherever it wants and nothing's gonna bother it because nothing can really hurt it. But maybe in Galar, there's this new species of Pokemon that is a legitimate threat to Snorlax, like a big, buff, beefy fighting type or something. In order to avoid whatever this threatening Pokemon is, Snorlax could start utilizing digging in order to get in a peaceful nap underground. Its body also becomes more brown and armored in appearance, so if any part of its body happens to be sticking up above the ground, most creatures would just mistake that for another part of the ground. Number four is another one that I've discussed in a video before. Spoiler alert, that's gonna be the case for the majority of the rest of these Pokemon because I really like these concepts, but none of them happened. And that is Gliscor. I adore Gliscor and it's one of my favorite Pokemon out there. Additionally, Electric is my favorite typing, so it really shouldn't surprise you that I would love to see an Electric Gliscor. My Electric Flying Gliscor was originally designed as an Alola form that inhabited the Haina Desert, and due to its proximity to the geothermal power plant, converted it into an Electric type. While there's no obvious power plant on the Galar region map, there are some clearly very industrial cities, and I think that an electric flying Gligar and Gliscor would fit in really well there, since they could glide from tall building to tall building and gain some electrical energy from the human power sources. Number five is a very similar entry to number four, that being Drapion. They're similar because they are both Gen 4 Scorpion-based Pokemon that I've discussed in videos before that I wanted to see turn into electric types, which is originally explained as an Alola form living in the Haina Desert, which has a very close proximity to the geothermal power plant. Oh my god, I didn't realize they were that similar. My electric poison Drapion concept originally came about because I loved the idea of sparks or bolts jumping in between its various pincers. But also, Electric Poison is a type combo that we have never seen before that I would love to see in Sword and Shield. A really cool Galarian Drapion would be an excellent way to introduce it. Number six is Weezing. Weezing is another Pokemon that I would really love to see a Galar form because I really love the concept that I developed for it. Weezing exists due to the presence of toxic poisonous gases and even feeds off of them as well. But what would happen if Weezing found itself in an environment where it didn't have access to those toxic poisonous gases because the air was extremely clean? Galar definitely has some industrial locations that would have a good chunk of pollution, but it also has a lot of countryside that would have pretty clean air because it's so far away from these massive sources of pollution. If any Weezing found themselves out there with no pollution to feed off of, they would have to adapt to feeding off of clean air particles instead, morphing their biology to become a representation of clean air particles. The little recycling symbol on it, I did that, isn't that fun? Ideally this would turn it into a pure flying type because that would be really cool, and we definitely need more pure flying types. Number seven is Arcanine. And Arcanine is a Pokemon that a lot of people have discussed wanting a regional variant for it. And I completely agree. It's one of the best designed Pokemon in Gen 1, and it really deserves some extra love. To me, it seems the most frequent typing that people give to potential regional variants of Arcanine is the water type. But when I was designing an Alolan Arcanine that I had Dark and Windy draw for me, I decided to give it the Ghost Typing. The main reason for that is that I thought adding a lot of wispiness to its fur would look really cool. I was correct. I originally justified this transformation by claiming that the Ghost Typing made Arcanine a better nighttime hunter. But now that Galar exists, I've realized that this Arcanine concept actually fits a lot better in Galar than it does in Alola, specifically due to the Scottish myth of a spectral dog known as the Ku Sith. I might be mispronouncing that, but just know that it has nothing to do with Star Wars. The Ku Sith, which means fairy dog, was feared as a harbinger of death. In a similar way, the Grim Reaper appears at death to lead the soul to the afterlife, the Ku Sith takes the soul to the fairy realm or underworld. Isn't that a perfect fit for a ghost type dog Pokemon located in the UK based region? It's completely ideal. You could even make it a ghost fairy type to better fit with the Ku Sith due to all the mentions of it being a fairy dog or taking people to the fairy world. Dark and Windy's fake Mondera Morte is actually based on the same myth and is how I knew of its existence. So I think a Pokemon like Daramorte or a ghost fairy type Alolan Arcanine 
would both be excellent homages to this really cool story. Number eight is actually a Pokemon I've discussed twice in videos before, so clearly I really want to see it, and that is Dawnfan. Dawnfan is a Pokemon that I've always liked, but I think it's an underappreciated Pokemon, despite being based on one of the most well-known and unique animals in all of the Animal Kingdom. Therefore, in Gen 8, I'd like to either see a brand new elephant Pokemon or a regional variant of Dawnfan. My concept for a Galarian Dawnfan is based on the idea of changing it from being more based on an African elephant, which live in more open terrain like Dawnfan does, to being based more on an Indian elephant, which tend to live in more forested terrain. Galar definitely has forests, so if a Dawnfan found itself in one of those forested areas, it would convert itself into a grass type to be better suited to living in that heavily wooded area. Dawnfan is originally based on a rubber tire, so I thought it'd be really interesting if the rubber tire inspired parts of its body changed to a more wooden material. It fit really well with the grass typing, and would also be a nice nod to the concept of wooden wagon wheels. Number nine is Octillery. Octillery, I believe, is a really strong candidate for getting a regional variant if they ever decide to give them to Johto Pokemon, since I feel like it's a really underappreciated Pokemon that doesn't get a whole lot of love. My concept for a regional variant of Octillery, originally designed as an Alola form, but now a Galar form, is a water psychic type based on the Mimic Octopus. Mimic Octopi are fascinating creatures that can change their appearance and behavior to mimic other sea creatures. They do this to either be more effective at sneaking up on prey, or to deter any potential predators by appearing more dangerous. If Octillery found itself in an environment with a lot more natural predators, becoming the Pokemon version of the Mimic Octopus would make perfect sense. It could maybe have the ability Illusion or the move Transform that would allow itself to disguise itself as something a lot more fearsome than it really is, thus being really effective at deterring any potential predators. The water type sticks around since obviously it's still an aquatic creature, but it gains the psychic type because its illusionary practices and its higher intelligence, since the Mimic Octopus is widely believed to be one of the most intelligent sea creatures, fit really well with the psychic typing. And the final entry is Torkoal. I've always had a soft spot for Torkoal. I used one in my very first playthrough of Emerald version, and I really liked Ashes in the anime. I think it deserves some extra love. This is my concept for an Alolan Torkoal, but I think it works just as well, if not better, as a Galarian Torkoal. It's a Poison Steel type, another never-before-seen type combination that I would like to see in Generation 8. As I've mentioned several times this video, Galar clearly has some very industrialized areas. If some Torkoal found themselves away from their usual volcanic climates and in a more city-like area instead, they'd probably have a tougher time finding the coal that they usually burn for energy. Instead, they'd probably start burning trash or industrial waste instead, causing its gases to become far more toxic and result in a poison typing. The fire typing goes away since far less heat is given off by burning random trash instead of coal. The steel typing comes about also due to its change in diet. Since it's burning trash instead of coal, it's probably burning a lot more metallic materials. That metal is then absorbed into its body, converting its shell into a metal structure kind of based more on gas tanks, which is partially its inspiration. So there we have it. Those are 10 Galar forms that I want to see show up in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Let me know in the comments below which one of my concepts was your favorite, and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more of my Pokemon content, I recommend this video here. All right, that's all I have for now. So till next time, we fans. Gotta catch them all!